Hey everyone, welcome back to Code Grid. Today we are tackling a cool sort of toggle animation. I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but I have been wanting to create a tutorial on GSAP Flip for a while now. Recently I saw a similar demo on Twitter that seemed like the perfect use case for Flip. For those who might not be familiar, GSAP Flip is a powerful plugin that allows for smooth transitions between two states even when the significant changes to the DOM structure would usually cause elements to shift abruptly. So we will be exploring how to use flip through a step by step process. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Now let's get started without any delay. Before diving into the code, it's essential to include all the necessary CDNs for this project. We will be using four key libraries, Locomotive Scroll for adding smooth scrolling, the GSEP library for the animations, the Flip plugin for those transitions and custom ease to build our unique easing beyond the pre-built GSEP functions that we get. First up, let's add a navbar. It will have two parts, one for the main links and the other one for the CTA, all using the anchor tags. And we will also put a simple footer with a couple more links. Now the key component are image gallery. We will start by creating a wrapper. Inside this wrapper, we will create a container for all our images. I usually put each image in a div for extra control over the animations. Now here is a crucial step. Assign two unique classes to the gallery container and the image. These classes will help us define the alternative layout styles later with CSS. Lastly, we will add a hero section with an h1 and a paragraph. For the toggle functionality, we will use a div as a button. Though you are welcome to use a standard HTML button if you prefer and that's our setup time to move on to the styling first off we are going to make sure all the elements start from the same baseline by removing any default margins and paddings and setting box sizing to border box next we are picking the new montreal fonts uh, for the body it's my go-to choice We want the images to fill their parent space, so we will set their width and height to 100% and use object fit cover to maintain their aspect ratio. For the navigation and footer, like every other video, we are keeping things simple as usual using Flexbox. It's actually straightforward, but if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment. The hero section needs to be the focal point so we will set position to absolute and push it in the center of the page using top left and transform properties. We will also set its z index to minus 1 allowing the images to scroll over it. Now we will add some basic styles to the h1 and the paragraph. The 
the button will also be absolutely positioned this time set to 75% from the top to push nicely below the hero section it will have a solid background some padding and basic styles It will have a higher Z index to make it stay on the top above the images. Now onto the gallery. It will span the full width with padding at the top equal to 100 viewport height giving the hero section room to be visible. For the images we will set their position to relative just so we can use transforms on them for the animation. We are not doing anything fancy here just some standard sizing for now. To achieve a exact layout, we will adjust the positioning of our images alternatively to the right and left using the left property. This will be our dynamic layout once the toggle is hit. For the default layout, we need the images to be stacked when the page loads. So we will set the position to absolute and then center them with the adjusted sizes to appear a little smaller. It seems like we might not need the other class set on the container. So let's keep it aside for now. Finally, we will set unique rotation on every image item in order to create a stacked card effect. And with that, we are ready to dive into the JavaScript to bring this all to life. So let's start by adding smooth scroll to the page first. Since we are using locomotive scroll for that purpose, we will have to set a couple data attributes on the image gallery and the container. By marking a div scroll container, you are telling the plugin that this is the area you should watch for scrolling events and apply smooth scrolling to. After doing that, we can create a new instance of locomotive scroll targeting the element with the data scroll container attribute. By setting smooth to true, we are activating smooth scrolling for the content within this container. Now, first up, we register the flip plugin with GSAP and create a custom easing curve named cubic for the smoother transitions. Next, we grab our gallery container and all the images. And we will also create an array of rotation values, which we can use to set the rotations for the images when they get back to their stacked layout again. We will now introduce a flag and set it to false initially, indicating our starting layout state. This variable plays a key role in toggling between our two gallery layouts. Then we will create a function which will be responsible to set the rotation of each image based on whether the flag is set to true or false. Let's dive into making our gallery interactive. We will start by attaching a click event listener to our toggle button. When clicked, this will trigger a few actions. First off, we will switch our flag to reflect the gallery's current state. This helps us manage whether the gallery is in its default layout or the toggle one. To enhance user experience, we are updating the current text to indicate whether the gallery is open or not. I have chosen to delay this text update by one second using the set timeout because I didn't want this text to be updated right away. Now implementing the flip animation involves three main steps. First of all, we will use the get state function to snapshot the gallery and the image layout before any changes. Next, 
we need to make the state changes so we will toggle classes on both the gallery container and the images this step is crucial for switching between our two layouts with the setup ready we invoke the flip object passing in our desired animation properties this includes updating positions adding stagger and easing Importantly, we initiate the apply rotation function right as the transition starts, ensuring each image receives the correct rotation angle. During the transition's completion, we refresh the scroll to adjust the new layout, keeping the page scrollable. Looks like we did something wrong here. The rotation values are not being applied correctly. Okay, so there was a typo in updating our flag. With that corrected, everything should work now. Yeah, there you have it. I hope this tutorial proves useful to you. Stay tuned for more and see you in the next video.